of Psalm. 34th division of Psalm. And due to the length of the passage and the limitations on our time, we're going to focus our semantic spotlight on verse 19. However, we will be referring to additional verses in that 34th division as the Spirit wills. Amen. The 34th division of Psalm, verse 19. If you are there, say amen. 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 Scripture says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. With this text in mind and our theme in mind for our revival, the family that prays together, stays together. Amen. I wanted to use this as an entree into the life of David because, you know, y'all going to have to say amen. 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 I know y'all want to get back there to uh, what we have in the back, but if y'all say amen, we'll get back there faster. Amen. 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 I, wanted to, I wanted us to uh, just kind of peek behind the curtain of, of eternity and look into the life of David because David was characterized as a man after God's own heart. Y'all helping me this morning. Yeah. But, you know, even though David was a man after God's own heart, David had some afflictions in his life. Amen. And, and so th th these afflictions he faced, so they were so many afflictions that it inspired David to declare many are the afflictions of the righteous. Now, you, you can't be too quick to uh, just assume that David was talking about himself when he said the righteous. But I want you to know something. I know a little bit about David. And I know David was righteous. Because you can read over there in Psalm 1 where David had this righteous thing worked out. Because he said, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But he said his delight is in the law of the Lord, and upon that law does he meditate day and night. And David said he would be just like the, the families over at Jerusalem. They would be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Do I have any family trees here today that's planted by the rivers of water? I want you to know that we haven't been here 143 years if we didn't have some trees planted by the rivers of water. This church wouldn't be as strong as it is right now if we didn't have some family trees planted by the rivers of water. I want you to know that if it had not been for the Lord God that we serve sending rain and water to those trees, we wouldn't be here today. But listen, David had this righteousness thing worked out because he said over there in Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not. He said he makes me to lie down in green pastures and he leads me beside the still waters. And then he said he restores my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. But David was not uh, naive. He said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. He said, I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to fear no evil because thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. And thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Yes, and David was so so consumed with righteousness that he said over there in Psalm 24, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. See, see, David understand that it all belonged to God. And he says, for he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the flood. And then David said, ask a question, who shall ascend unto the hill of the Lord and who shall stand in his holy place? And then he said, he that hath clean hands and a 
pure heart and hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity nor sworn deceitfully he shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of our salvation so David understand that the righteousness comes from the Lord I know you think because you got a big Bible and you got a cross around your neck that that's your righteousness but righteousness comes from the Lord. I know you think because you serve on the deacon board or serve on the usher board, that's righteous. But righteousness comes from the I know you think that you sang in the choir and they sure sounded good today. But righteousness comes from the Lord. Amen. And, and, and David just kept right on going with this righteousness thing because he said over there in Psalm 100, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land. He said, serve the Lord with now, he didn't say serve the Lord with sadness, and some of y'all look like y'all trying to serve him with sadness today. He didn't say serve the Lord with meanness, but he said serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with singing. And then he said, know ye that the Lord he is. Oh, y'all didn't sound too good on that. Let me try it one more time. Know ye that the Lord he is. Yes, and David understood that even though I'm a man all by myself, it is, it, is, it is he that has made us and not we ourselves. Because we are his, we are, we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. And then he said, y'all to enter his gates with thanksgiving. I wonder, is there anybody that came in this house today? And when you got out of your car, you said, I don't care what nobody got on in there today. And I don't care who's sitting beside me because I'm going to come in the church house and I'm going to thank him. I don't care who's, who, who's in that church house today. I'm going in here and I'm going to thank him. If the sun shine, I'm going to thank him. If the wind blow, I'm going to thank him. If the lightning flash, I'm going to thank him. If the thunder roll, I'm going to thank him. I, 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 if I feel like it, I don't thank him. And if I don't feel like it, I'm going to thank the Lord. Amen. So David had this righteousness thing worked out. So much so that over in Psalm 34, you can read it for yourself. He said, many are the afflictions of the righteous. Now that sounds like an oxymoron, David. Because God blesses the righteous. Oh, you ought to say amen. Amen. Listen, if you got any blessing going on in your life, it's because God blessed you. Help me somebody today. And, and see, David was the anointed by God to become the king over all of Israel. But his life was filled with affliction. David was a mighty warrior, but his life was filled with affliction. David was a great musician, but his life was filled with affliction. So in spite of all of David's obedience, David's life was still filled with affliction. And listen, if you're a child of God, I, I don't want to rain on your parade and I don't want to bust your bubble. But trouble will show up at your house too. Oh, I wish I had somebody. Amen. Trouble, trouble just, just walks on in. Uninvited. Trouble doesn't knock on the door. Doesn't ring the doorbell. You just come home one evening and trouble land up on your couch. Trouble going in your refrigerator. Tr trouble taking a nap in your bed. Trouble sitting in your game room watching TV. Trouble is all up in your house and your place is tore up from the floor up and you don't know when trouble came in. Make no mistake about it. Every blood-washed and blood-bought believer will experience some troubles. Listen, child of God, you will experience some setbacks in your life. <clears throat> Help me, Holy Ghost, don't matter. If you're rich or you're poor, you will experience some setbacks. If you're young or you're old, you will experience some setbacks. If you're educated or uneducated, you will experience some setbacks. Uh, if you've been to school, but if you haven't been to school, you will experience some, some setbacks. If you're married or divorced, you will experience some setbacks. 
if you're single and, and looking, you will experience some setbacks. I got their attention then. Amen. Yes, listen, I don't care who you are or where you are in life, you will experience some setbacks. But I got some good news this afternoon. Because I, I, I preach good news. Because David said that many are the afflictions of the righteous. But David said, listen, your setback is just a setup for a comeback. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I, I, I wish I had time to, to deal with that a little bit longer. But, but listen, you might find yourself in some tight spots in life. There are, there are some pinches that you might get in. There are some distressing circumstances. So I know you asking the question. I can look at your face and you say, Preacher, what do we do about all these afflictions that the people of God have to endure? What do we do about all of the tragedies that we see in our nation? What do we do when we don't, don't even want to send our children to school because of all of the senseless shootings that are happening around our nation? What do we do when all of these heartbreaking realities are going on in our nation? All of these heartbreaking realities are going on in our state. And all of these heartbreaking realities are going on in our cities and our communities. Well, David said that many are the frictions of the righteous. However, the Lord. I'm going to say it over here. He said, many are the afflictions of the righteous. How and ever. The Lord. I'm going to say it over on this side. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers us out of them all. <laughs> That's mighty good news today. David says, in the mix of these afflictions, our God is a deliverer. Yes. In the midst of all heartache and heartbreak, God is a deliverer. Yes. In the midst of trials and tribulations, God is a deliverer. Yes. In the midst of sadness and sorrow, God is a deliverer. Yes. And in the midst of whatever you're going through, I want you to know that God is a deliverer. Yes. Now, I don't want you to get, I want you to understand something about Psalm 34. It's connected to 1 Samuel 22. When David, a man after God's own heart, is going through. You see, David had to go through some trouble in his life. David had to go through some affliction in his life. Because you understand that David had been on the fast track to success. Oh, y'all remember, don't you? The boy was a little boy and he went by the brook and he picked up five smooth stones. And he, and he went up against a, a giant named Goliath. And David slew that giant with, with a slingshot and five stones. I tell you, the boy was on the fast track to success. But then, you know, he got in, involved with King Saul. And Saul was, had a green-eyed monster going on. Because Saul was jealous of David. And David had to go on the run. I wonder, is there anybody in here today that's on the run? Uh, you might be running from your trouble because you, somebody got some giant bills at the house that, uh oh that they running from oh they didn't like that somebody got some giant health issues that you running from somebody's got some giant problems in your relationship that you running from somebody got some giant problem with their kids that they running from Oh, I'm getting a little closer now. Somebody got some giant problem at that church that they're running from. Amen. Hey, man. So, so, so this is what happened. David was on the run. And David went by the, the house of the Lord. What a wonderful thing. When you know that things are not looking the way you want them, you can go by the house of God. So David went by the house of God and he talked to the priest. And G David went in sad, but he came out happy. David went in discouraged, but he came out encouraged. G David went out in with a heavy load, but he came out toe-tapping. And that's the way it is when you come to homecoming 2013. Somebody came here today and you got a burden in your heart. But we're going to lift that heavy burden today because the word of God will destroy the burden and it will destroy the yoke. 
Yes, so immediately after fleeing from Gath, David finds safety in a cave. In a cave called Adula. And it's at Adula that David remembers how the Lord had blessed him. It's at Adula where David remembered how the Lord had delivered him. It's at Adula where David remembered how the Lord had brought him from the earliest existence of his life until this present time. And it's at Adula where David remembered that God had delivered him from King Saul. It's at Adula where David remembered that God had delivered him from his enemies. And you know, we do serve a God who is a deliverer. Amen. He will deliver you. And when God delivers, he always delivers on time. Now, now notice with me. Notice with me. If you're thinking with me that God will, what David does not say. He does not say that God delivers us from some of our affliction. All right. All right. Amen. All right. David does not say that God delivers us from most of our affliction. Oh, I wish I had somebody. David does, not, David does not say that he lives us from some of them or most of them, but David says that he delivers us from all of our affliction. You see, David knew something. He knew what God could do when we let God have his way. You see, David knew what God could do when we just turn it over to him. David knew what God could do when we trust in God with all our heart. And lean not to our own understanding. David knew what God could do when it looks like you're at a disadvantage. David knew what God could do when your enemies have the upper hand. David knew what God could do when you just get out of the way and let God have his way. And when you let God have his way, he'll make you the head and not the tail. When you let God have his way, he'll make you the lender and not the borrower. When you let God have his way, uh, he'll make you to prosper and be in good health. Uh, when you let God have his way, no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. And every tongue that rises up against you shall be condemned. And uh, Help me, Holy Ghost. Now, I, I know you're asking the questions of Pastor White. Well, all of this sin in our society and all of this violence in our society and all of these Horrible things and these tragedies that we experience with all of these afflictions. What do we do in the midst of all of this sin? What do we do in the midst of all of this sickness? What do we do in the midst of all of these afflictions? Well, Solomon said in Second Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14. He started off with this one word, if. Somebody know where I'm going. If. My people. I'm not talking about anybody else. I'm talking about my people. God says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. And then he says, once you humble yourself and pray, I want you to seek my I, I wish I could testify for just a moment. Because whenever I had done something and I knew I was going to get in trouble with my parents, that was the last person face I wanted to see. Oh, y'all don't have to say amen. It, it's the truth anyhow. But God said that if you will humble yourself and and pray and when you messed up just come to me and say Lord I messed up but I want you to clean me up if you will arm yourself and seek my faith but but then he said something else he said you're gonna have to you're gonna have to turn from your wicked ways that, now, now that don't mean that you can lean from your wicked way. Oh, y'all know what I'm talking about. Amen. Lord, I, I, I ain't going to do it no more. This is the last. 
you, you're just leaning. You, you ain't turned all the way. Because see, when my wicked way is over here, and preacher Woods, when I turn, my back is to my wicked way. And what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to turn from our wicked way. And, and, and if we turn from our wicked way, God says, this is what I'm going to do. He says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stand on the balance of heaven. And then I'm going to hear. Do you know we have a prayer here in God? God said, I will hear from heaven. And when I hear from heaven, that here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to forgive their sin and I'm going to heal their land. Listen, listen, listen. I know you're wondering, so well then, if we got all of these affliction preacher, how do we get God to do all of these? How do we get him to deliver us from all of these afflictions? Well, David told us about it in the first three verses. He said, uh, in the first verse, he says it's, it's intentional praise. David says, I will bless the Lord. David says, I'm going to get in a position to bless the Lord. I'm going to get in preparation to bless the Lord. I know we sing the song, God bless America. But I want you to know something today, Jerusalem, it's time for America to bless God. I know, I know, we, want, I know we want God to bless our nation, but it's time for our nation to bless God. I know we want God to bless our communities, but it's time for our communities to bless God. I know we want God to bless our families, but it's time for our families to bless God. Well, I haven't stepped on your toes. Just hold them back because I'm getting ready to come your way. I know we want God to bless our finances. But it's time for our finances. But, but, I, but David also said there's a regiment. There's a regiment to this play, praise when he blesses the Lord. David said, I will bless the Lord at all time. You see, David understood that you can't be a part-time praiser. Amen. You got to be all in or, or not at all. Yeah, see, I don't want to be a, 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 a temporary blesser of God. I want to bless God at all times. In the rough time, I'm still going to bless him. And in the smooth time, I'm still going to bless him. When the sun shines, I'm going to bless him. But when the storm cloud roll up in my life, I'm still going to bless him. Because I want to be met, found guilty of blessing the Lord at all times. Well, how, how do you bless the Lord? David says, this praise, his praise shall continually be in my mouth. What David is saying is that's not perfunctory praise. But it's perpetual praise. Oh, I like the way that sounds. Yeah, because see, you can't just come in here and just go through the motion. Oh, I will bless the Lord. Y'all know, uh, y'all know what I'm talking about. No, you got to be, you you got to be involved in praising God. David says that this this praise must be continually in my mouth. In fact. The Bible says that God inhabits the praises of his people. Amen. And we know that when praises go, blessings come down. Amen. So listen, I don't care what's going on in my life. I'm going to praise him. When the sun shines, I'm going to praise him. When the wind blows, I'm going to praise him. When the economy is booming, I'm going to praise him. But when we're in a recession, I'm still going to praise him. The price of gas can go up to $5 a gallon, child. But I'm still going to praise him. When I go in the bank, I praise him. And when I come out the bank, I praise him. When I lay down at night, I praise him. And when I get up in the morning, I praise him. Whatever's going on in my life, I'm going to praise the Lord. And, I, and, and, and listen, I set you up because one thing about my praise, ain't no rocks going to cry for me. Hey Amen. I'm going to have this praise in my mouth. Yes, and then David, not only did David express his resolve to praise God, but uh, David expresses his reason to praise God. He says, my soul shall make her boast in the Lord. That's informational praise. And, and, and the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Now, we talked about the humble earlier. But see, when you do the etymological study of that word humble, you will find out that it really is the same word as afflicted. 
So David is going back to what he said in verse 19, in verse 2, and he says that the afflicted will hear thereof and be glad. So the afflicted know that God has delivered in their life and they got a reason to praise God. Yes, David knew that every time you get a blessing from the Lord, we have a chance to boast in the Lord. Every time the Lord delivers us out of our afflictions, we have a chance to boast in the Lord. Every time God prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies, I have a chance to boast in the Lord. I believe that David looked around and he saw how God had been so good to him. And he saw how God had, had blessed him in his life. And David saw how good God had been to him. And I believe David just couldn't contain himself. He just couldn't hold his peace because in the third verse, David said, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. You see, David went from individual praise to institutional praise. Uh, amen. And, 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 and I, I'm almost through here. But here's the th important thing I want you to know. Our individual praise blesses God. But if you really want to praise God in the beauty of holiness, good God. If you get all the saints of God to humble themselves and fall down before him, worship and adore him. And when all the saints of God are lifting up praises to the Lord, the glory falls down. And when God's glory falls down, the whole house, there's a sweet in the whole house. Anybody want to magnify the Lord? Are you, are you ready to magnify him today? Listen, listen. If you magnify him, you make your sickness seem small. When you magnify him, you make your problems seem minor. When you magnify him, your mountain will look like a molehill. And when you magnify him, guess what? Your stumbling block become your stepping stone. Anybody want to magnify the Lord? And then David says, finally, let us exalt his name together. Yes, and there is a name. I love to hear. I love to sing his word. It sounds like in my ear. It's the sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus. I don't know about you, but oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. He said, let's exalt his name together. That means that we've got to lift him up. I mean, I told you that, that uh, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered us out of them all. And I want you to know that even Jesus had some affliction. Yes, because Jesus suffered a setback one Friday out there on Calvary. But that setback was just a setup. For a comeback. When they nailed his hand, that was a setback. Help me now. But that setback was just a setup for a comeback. When they nailed his feet, that was a setback. But that setback was just a setup for a comeback. And they put him in the grave and, and he stayed there all night, Friday night. But it, it was just a setup for a comeback. They, he stayed there all night, Saturday night, and, but it was just a setup for a comeback. Because early Sunday morning, that setback was just a setup for a comeback because Jesus got up with all power in his hand. Hey, hey, hey. Aren't you glad about it? Aren't you glad about it? But I got some more good news because that same Jesus uh, uh, that went in the grave uh, one Friday uh, uh, and got up early Sunday morning, I want you to know he's going to make another comeback because one of these days uh, 
the dead in Christ shall rise first and we that remain will be caught up caught up hey 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 ain't he alright ain't he alright he's coming back I know he's coming back I used to hear a song that they used to sing it said don't you let this world mislead you don't you ever go astray trust in God's word and believe it and it'll never pass away you see him in his glory riding on the clouds of joy and greeting us with an open arm and peace forevermore I know that everything it's gonna be all right. He's coming back. Like he said he would. Yeah, yeah it's gonna be all right. He's coming back. For the true and good. Now when the sky is darkened, there won't be no moonlight. Oh, the time has finally come, but he'll change the wrong the right. And now if you're always searching, trying to find the bottom line, just give your love and life to God, he'll give you peace of mind. I know that everything is gonna be alright, he's coming back, like he said he would. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be all right. He's coming back for the true and good. Get ready for peace and love and happiness. He's coming back like he said he would. Get ready for peace and love and happiness. He's coming back. Praise the Lord. I don't know about you, but didn't your heart burn? Yes. Glory to God. But we, we, we dare not leave until we give an invitation to come to Christ. The Bible teaches us that 